I spent a week playing on the new Cabal Signal server, and this is what happened. Wow. Please. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay. So for context, if you somehow haven't heard, Cabal released a server, which is basically a 3 month long event. The Cygnus server, where quote unquote everything is speed, just means that we have an enormous XP and drop rate increase. The challenge of the event is to get enough mid rebirth so you could transfer your character back to normal servers. I also filled out a pre-registration form, hoping to get the free 30 day platinum beat, which I did not. At the very least I got the 3 day beat, so I'm sorted for half this week. The event started on January 16 at 3pm. I don't know why they would start this event on a weekday in the middle of the afternoon, but it became a problem later on. Upon creating a character and logging in, I was met with such a nostalgic feeling of when there were still new players coming to this game. The beginning towns being full assured me that this would be a fun event. I then checked my pre-registration rewards to see that they gave me some very OP equipment. But since some of you guys might have not pre-registered, I decided not to use them yet so I can show a more accurate representation of the Cygnus server. After this, I did the tutorial missions, like talking to the NPCs that tell you how to open the inventory. After a while, I encountered my first problem, which is players having the same quest and clogging the progression. This only happened for a short time though, as they added more channels later. I then did my normal quests, getting level 15 and hunting for my mini bosses set. It was also around this time that I felt the added 1500% bonus experience as I was soaring through levels while killing random mobs. I then decided to remake a character and play as a wizard instead. It took me only a few minutes to catch up with the force archer, so it didn't really matter. After 30 minutes or so of questing, my friend and I went to try the level 1 chaos arena to get XP. We did fail after a few minutes, but we got 10 levels and I unlocked the combo skill while in here as well marking my first hour of playing and reaching level 46 already. When I got out, I saw this world ruler boss icon, where I assumed that strong bosses would spawn. Seeing how as I was still weak, I decided not to go check. This was a mistake, as it was the first and last time I ever saw this icon or a world ruler boss. I then tried to look inside the agent shop. Another big mistake, as this caused my client to bug out and force me to log out of the game. After re-logging in during a random mission dungeon, I got a critical ring plus one drop which I had no idea I could even get here, marking my first time of feeling the 500% drop rate increase. While I was near, I also hunted for my Itoko orbs, which somehow took me 5 minutes to do. I guess my luck with drops ended with a crit plus one ring. Afterwards, I got level 15 Chief Hunter, farmed for the entra set, and unlocked port locks, where I ended my first day at level 58. <laughs> Day 2 starts and I decided to finally use my free blessing bead, as my quest now required traveling some pretty long distances. The first part being done in Port Lux. I did this quest until I reached about level 70, which unlocked Fort Ruina. Did some quests there, hit A Master, then was locked out of normal quests until I finished my 7th BS level up, which meant I had to finally do the Lake in the Dusk dungeon. The struggling to kill the orcs here was very fun. It was the first time in this playthrough where I actually felt like I was playing the game. I had bad lucks with the drops but managed to get 3 levels here, which I found amazing as I was already over leveled before starting this dungeon. Finishing my BS level quest, I finally could do the rest of my quests, which I did. This is also the first time on this server that I encountered a person botting for entries. So I guess the economy is ruined from day 2. I did some other quests and finally reached G Master. It was at this point that I realized that although the XP was really good, I still couldn't progress far because I wasn't getting any extra odds. This was really detrimental to my progress. Anyways, we decided to also run the Ruina Station. The dungeon was nothing special, except for the mechanical bulls part which gave us so much XP that farming it gave us 10 levels within 20 minutes, reaching level 105. Completing this dungeon would end my second day on the server at level 106, almost doubling my level the previous day. I had to end this day incredibly short because, again, they started it in the middle of the week for some reason. Yalla? Yalla. Day 3 starts by rerunning Lake in the Dusk for the other quest that they give you after you run it for the first time. These were also pretty unlocking drops. 
but at least I finished it way faster than the first time. After this, it was finally time to start doing Lakeside. I think this represents a significant part of the Cabal experience since this is probably the point where most players are starting to feel weak because of the aggressive and tough mobs. As I had a decade of experience playing this game, I got through with no problems. I also got an elusive copy drop while at Lakeside, which I was late to notice. Anyways, got completer and was locked out of other quests again, which meant I had to finally do the EOD BF1 dungeon. My only and useless friend was offline, but I really wanted to complete this dungeon today. So I went through the longest hour of my life. If you didn't know if you're too squishy to normally complete a dungeon solo, the only way to complete it is by killing literally every mob you see since they can hit you while you're trying to kill the necessary mobs to progress. This meant that I had to beat each mob to 1v1 or 1v2 me over and over and over again. Thank god they updated this dungeon recently and made it way easier. Without that, I would have never probably completed it. This part was the most challenging since there were dozens of mobs concentrated in this little room, and there were barely any space to kite back if you were getting chased. The second hardest would be these flesh golems, who could just randomly one-shot me had my defense rate failed. I also opted in to do the side quests, since at this point I've already been here for 40 minutes, so what's 5 minutes more? The item it gave me was useless, but I'm just glad I'm near the end. Compared to the flesh golems, Mergarep the final boss was a joke. Despite being able to spawn dozens of mobs behind him, it was very easy to lead and kite him out of the room making me clear the EOD BF1 at a world record pace of 46 minutes and 28 seconds. Still no rings and good items though, but at this point I was just finally happy to be out of that dungeon. Completing this particular BS level up quest unlocked one of the most important main quest lines in Cabal, the Scalid quest. This quest line required the players to kill a bunch of mobs in the newly unlocked map of Forgotten Ruin for a set of pretty decent items. I only managed to finish a couple of these quests though and decided to end the day there at only level 119. On day 4 I realized that I still need so much else to progress further. Since dungeon entries were still pretty expensive, I tried to take advantage of the increased drop rate to hunt for EOD ones. After 45 minutes I didn't get a single drop, only got these extract potions which I could sell so it wasn't a total waste of time. I then went to the trading channel to see how much I could sell them for, when I noticed that upgrade and force cores were at a pretty high price for a new economy. This meant that I could actually make decent alts by spamming my daily weekend dungeons for low to medium cores. Upon finishing the weekend dungeons, I immediately set up shop to sell them since the agent shop was still broken. I managed to sell some of them an hour later, which meant I could finally go back to questing. Bad time for questing though, since I had to do the hardest quest dungeon in the game. Someone in the comments please tell me, am I just fucking stupid or something? I literally had to use 3 of my odd circles here just so I could complete this bullshit dungeon. I then spent all my owls I earned earlier in finally maxing my skills, continued on my quest where I got an EOD1 drop from a random ghoul mob. I also finally hit transcender so I got my SP skills. At this point, my free blessing bead had expired, so I had to go buy another one, which is just the worst feeling in the world, giving this piece of shit gamer money. But now that I've actually spent my real life owls, I know Cabal will remove me from the poorest list and will finally let me get good drops. So I went hunting for map parts at Fort Ruina for my quest. Doubters got real quiet as I got 2 drops in 40 minutes, so I went to rerun lake for a quest. Didn't get any item drops or a good number of course, so doubters got loud again. Anyways, time to finish the level 100 vs level up quest at Volcanic Citadel. Pretty standard dungeon, weren't any parts that were hard. I did get an outrageous aqua orb with one slot which is the first weapon drop in this playthrough that I could actually use. I also got one of my favorite titles in the game which is Lava Cave Explorer, a second only to another citadel dungeon title, the inside the lava cave. <clears throat> anyway, I completed some scalid quests and got the boots, gloves, helmets and the orbs, gaining 50k combat power which is pretty good for now. My quests now require a rerun of EOD B1F, so I went hunting for one, and it only took me about 30 minutes, and took another 20 minutes to finish the dungeon. Then I decided to do my quest on Lakeside. 
which took so much time because of these fat ass golems. After that, I hunted for entries again, only getting two RS Master Cards, which marked the end of the day at level 135. Ah! She finna. Ah! ah. Who is this nigga? Big shoe, little jeans, ass nigga, big coat ass nigga, little head ass nigga, little nose ass nigga, little chin ass nigga. Again and notice that today is the final day to gain the free set from pre-registrating. I'm sorry but I hope there's a set like this that you could buy for cheap when and if you decide to play on the server. From equipping these items, I got a massive CP boost, almost double of what I had before. Unfortunately, it didn't contain any weapons, so my damage wasn't that strong. But I doubt I could die with plus 20 max EU Siege Metal Armors. I checked the auction house again and it was still fucked. Now that I'm OP though, I'll make sure to take advantage and do as much dungeons as I can right now. This starts with the Forgotten Temple 1, which was also my BS level up quest. Nothing really interesting here. Forgot about the key mechanic and accidentally picked up a green one, which wasted a minute or two. The new armor set was so strong I didn't even get close to dying at the stone golem part. I then started to do my dailies for Al's where I encountered a pretty funny bug. Aside from that though, the runs went as usual. After that, I did an EOD BF2 run for another BS level up quest, and hopefully a tonsil cell. I then finished the dungeon and got a uh, seal of the boss. This was more than useless because I had no plans to do the collection and I couldn't get rid of it, so it will just permanently occupy a slot in my inventory. Another BS level up done, and now I just have to do 50 more quests. Yay! The first set of this quest was in the Illusion Castle Underworld, where we can hopefully get Ilaikanus Orb. While inside, there was a guy on Megaphone roleplaying. This person named Cygnus Tips was asking people with yellow text on the server if they had questions to ask him. After a while, he megad that he has to temporarily sign out and will be revisiting soon. Suspiciously though, after only a few seconds, another account named Cygnus Emperor was now also megaphoning with yellow text, thanking Cygnus Tips for their service. This person was easily the highlight of the day and it was a shame I couldn't return his energy in the chat as I had to spam my combos. If you're watching this Cygnus Tips slash Emperor, I hope you know I was so down roleplaying as your subject or something. Also, despite your unending number of haters, you were extremely funny. Really wish I had talked to Cygnus guy instead as the loot for this dungeon was, yet again, shit. Now that I was extremely tanky though, I wanted to try doing higher chaos arenas for more cores to sell, which was a major success. I then set up shop and took a nap. I woke up to almost all my cores sold. I used my daily dungeon challenger quest to get the entry for Radiant Hall, which will be the next dungeon for my BS level up. The Illusion Castle Radiant Hall is my all-time favorite dungeon aesthetic in Cabal. You start off in these relatively normal cramped halls fighting griffins. Then you get deeper into the castle and start encountering ghosts, ogres, fire spirit monsters. Then at the very end, you teleport to a floating island in another dimension. Despite having run this dungeon hundreds of times in my life, I've never actually read any part of its lore, which I think adds to the mystical coolness. Another reason that I like this dungeon is that it actually gave me an earring drop. Very lucky as these earrings were equipped until the end of this playthrough. Now that I had a substantial amount of capital, I can continue clearing chaos dungeons from levels 1 to 3 to gain cores of various grades. Also, I only just now realized this, but because you always had to wait 6 minutes for the boss to spawn in Chaos Arenas, grinding these dungeons is perfect for when you want owls, but actually have to do something else, like write a script for your stupid YouTube video. After everything I did today, I wound up with only 40 dungeon points, which weren't enough for an essence rune. So I opted to gamble and get an option scroll instead, which gave me garbage. I set up shop with my cores, now having a pleasing low to high spread, then went to sleep, ending day 5 at level 158. The 6th day starts with me 50 million alts richer and with no more cores. 
My special coupons were expiring soon, so I decided to spend them on EOD tickets. Hopefully, to get the ring. After that disappointment, I went to my newly unlocked Pontus Ferrum map to do some quests. I also somehow got 3 FT1 entries while killing random mobs here. So I decided to quickly run them. I even remembered to wait for a red key this time, so all went pretty smoothly. I also got an FT2 entry drop, which was pretty good. But that was pretty much all I got for my runs. Daily send selling time! Got a quick 70 million, which finally put me over 100 million alts for the first time this playthrough. It was now time for Sienna's Crest 1 for my BS level up. As a long range AoE damage dealer, this is probably one of the most satisfying dungeons to do in Kabalo. Also, I don't know if this was a bug or something, but the normal seed at the end to complete the dungeon didn't let me out. And I think it was because I didn't go to the secret room for the previous bracelet. But I was too lazy to waste another 5 minutes in walking back just for a probably weak bracelet, so I just exited the dungeon myself. BS level up complete, and I still don't have the max amount of SP, which sucked. Since I had a lot of medium upgrade cores left from earlier days, I wanted to try upgrading the Aqua Orb I found yesterday, so it would be better than the Topaz I had equipped. I managed to fail at plus 2, but succeeded at plus 6, which was a first for me. It was still way weaker than my Topaz, so I didn't equip it yet. My next BS level up quest was at the Radiant Hall, and despite this being my favorite dungeon to look at, it just takes way too long to run around for the quests. And since I already got an earring drop, I doubt I'll get a good one again. Okay, so the astute among you viewers might have noticed that I use the term days very liberally. If you go and rewatch the earlier footage, you might have noticed this ugly clock in the lower left corner. And how sometimes the day actually lasts for way more than 24 hours. This has been the case since day 4 and will be the case until day 7 as I couldn't play for an extended time on any one day. I then did my dailies again, got enough dungeon points to buy an essence rune which gave me dexterity. It was alright since I didn't have any essence runes aside from the one the quest gave me. I then sold my course and got another 80 million owls. While I was here I bought EOD1 entries again for 1.5 million each which were the cheapest ones I could find. Thanks again auction house. The first run gave me 2 Osmium CJ Paulets. Which you know I, I think the Cabal drop rate is super fucked because in my previous video where I farmed event items for billions of owls, go check that out by the way if you haven't, most OP strat for noobs. Anyway, I wish I had recorded the instances where event items drop because I swear that items would, I mean good items would only drop in specific runs and not spread evenly around all runs. So like the third and fifth runs would drop 5 event items but runs 1, 2, and 4 wouldn't drop anything. Comment below if you'd wanna see a video investigating that or something. I equipped the Osmium CJ palette immediately as it was better than the one I was wearing. In the second run, I got a Pertz Von something mercenary card, which was pretty good and my first summon. The rest of the runs gave me nothing. The same thing happened with the B2F. Although the tonsil is much rarer than the ring, so I was okay with not getting it below 100 runs. I got two seals though, which again, is less than useless. After this, I wanted to try and get XP. So I did my first daily mission from Hankoff, which required me to kill the yellow mobs in Pontus Ferrum and Grix in FT1. Due to the quest XP not being changed, the XP reward was pretty low compared to just killing random mobs in Pontus. While I was here, I decided my daily dungeon entry would be to Forbidden Island for another BS level up. I really thought I would struggle here because of my bad orbs, but I managed to kill this guy without him healing. I did however struggle with the last Areptify quest as I always forget that I just need to wait for the ghost ladies to spawn. This dungeon also gave me a level up which is nice even though it was the only thing it gave me. This dungeon is also pretty high up there in terms of looks. I haven't really been mentioning it but I am just constantly checking the agent shop throughout the days to see whether they have fixed it or not. Because in my mind there's no way that they let it go this long with the broken market. But I must be crazy because they still haven't. Thank god they updated the cash shop though so now we have 1 day Arcridium sets for 100 force gems. To cap the day I sold my remaining course in some pieces, ending day 6 at only level 165. Uh, uh.
We start the last day by barely selling any cores. Unfortunately, by this point, the server population had already plummeted. I tried to see if the agent shop was good now, so I could put the cores out of my inventory. But I was a fool to believe. With all these excess materials, I finally decided to start crafting, seeing if there were any fun hidden bonuses they put to make the amnesty gain better. But I was a fool to be- I also buckled and finally did the collection quest, so I could get rid of all the garbage in my inventory and warehouse. I'm sorry for putting you guys through the pain of seeing my shit inventory every time. With a now semi-clean warehouse, I decided to find a good orb to spend my 200m alls on. I found this guy trying to sell plus 1 rings of luck for 90m. I have no idea how we managed to get 7 of them, when I can't even manage to find a good orb. I still didn't wanna give up, so I did my dailies. Hopefully with more alls, I can finally find better orbs. In the middle of doing dailies, someone was megaphoning and offering a free Eternal Chaos Arena boost which I, and some other people, gladly took. This brought me up 4 levels, which let me hit 170. Shout out to Yuna Yggdrasil, you are the goat. Sold my course, medium ones didn't sell again, so I upgraded my aqua orb to plus 7. Also, I decided to enchant the orb and put a CDI on its slot. I hate the option animation because I have never managed to add something on the first time. So I just have to sit here and watch this flashing text for 10 minutes knowing I'm just wasting my force course. I also managed to fail a second time adding this. So this was extra fun. What actually is fun is doing dungeons. So it's S2 time everybody! Again, with the OP armor I had, no trouble surviving this dungeon. My shit orbs did waste a lot of time at this part as this boss is really tanky and has 2 lives. I just love doing S2 with AoE skills. Hitting these combos and hearing these sounds must be what smoking crack feels like. Again with the tanky boss that has 2 lives. Is this like a lore thing? Why do they revive? Can someone tell me like in the comments? As I will not read a single paragraph while in dungeons. Sienna was still the baddest bitch of all though. Look at that absolute yacht! I did do the extra chest now which also gave me crap. Got to level 172 here though. Tried my daily mission again, still so bad compared to just running a dungeon. I also misremembered the max SP being the 17th BS level up, so I get excited for nothing. Got enough DP for an essence rune and got attack rate. It is now finally time to start the portion of hunting for my red ring. I start off with 4 runs, all only 1 million each. Still no ring this time. All the titanium means I can't craft for Amnity again. I got 6 medium force cores of the runs. So this will be my last attempt at adding a CDI to this stupid orb. Thankfully it was all that I needed. Mid dailies, I noticed that I actually had top records for all the weekend dungeons on this server so far. Even beating Yuna Yggdrasil, the person who was boosting me earlier. Shoutouts to him, sucks to suck I guess. I also realized that I still did not have the fucking murder ring, so I bought another 4 EODs. I, once again, succumbed to my desperation for the ring. And was once again, disappointed. While I was here, I also took a shot at B2F and left with no tonsil. With all the shit material from the dungeon, I reached 1k amnesty. While trying to look for an orb, I realized that I could just try to find a Lycanus one instead. So I bought a bunch of IC entries. No luck in any Lycanus orbs. Hopefully this reward chest is good. <laughs> what was actually good is the rune capsule from Patricia which gave me a max crit rune. I haven't even gotten this yet on the main character I created for this channel. For a change of scenery, I wanted to try DX dungeons, which now required UCHs to buy. This must be a recent update as I didn't see this when I was playing a few months ago. I choose Catacomb Forest as this was the easiest one to do if you have good AoE damage. However, aside from requiring UCHs to enter, I think they also made the drop rates really bad. I managed to only get a 4 score medium and a 4 score high, which actually meant I had a net negative, as this was not worth 1 million alls plus a UCH. And this made me realize something. This game, this, this EOD dungeon has corrupted my mind. I came into the server with eyes of glee. I was not born to suffer. I was not put here to be put down like some, some cockroach in the street. I will do everything to survive. I will live my life. No matter how much cabalin and play parking, seek those emperors and tipsters to stop me. I believe in myself. And do you know what happens when you believe in yourself? You find peace or you find glory.
And with that, the week is finished. Overall, I would describe this experience as painfully mediocre. This server was really good at giving me a fresh, fun experience and the ability to get pretty high-level characters for so much less of the effort. However, it did fail in a lot of other aspects. The biggest gripe I had was with commitment. Everything you could possibly do while in Cygnus would only actually amount to something if you managed to get Archangel 2. I knew coming in that I would never get that. Even if I had continued playing for the next month or so, I simply don't have the time to poop sock Cabal anymore. All I have time for now is the casual 2 or 3 hours every other weekend when I get the itch of gaining a billion else or for grinding a dungeon. And because of that, it would be much better to play on the regular servers instead. And the second problem I faced was despite the increased XP and drop rate, it didn't really feel that different from playing on a normal server. The thing that made me very excited about the announcement for this was it was an official server. This meant you could interact with GMs, have exciting events, an actually good cash shop. But as you watch, I didn't really experience any of this. When Cabal announced a server with an increased XP and drop rate, they gave us a server with an increased XP and drop rate, and absolutely nothing more. The Cygnus server is the equivalent of reading everything on a PowerPoint slide when your teacher asks you to present something. Just doing the bare minimum. Do you guys think I expected too much? Was I really dumb for getting excited when they announced this? I'd love to hear what you think about this server in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye!